5 o'clock and time for news. Breaking. Another serious situation at 5A. A student run over. 10 News Live. Mother Nature pounding Tampa Bay and more on the way. Van Fleet on deck. The Amber Alert extended outside of Florida. Cops casting an even wider net. A beer truck flips into the drink. 400 pounds of teeth, scales, and nails. But and a woman calls 911 because she says the screaming goats sound like they're screaming help. The big show first at five starts now. You're watching 10 News in HD, powered by Bright House Networks, home of free HD. From Tampa Bay's news leader, this is 10 News at 5. First at 5 starts with breaking news. Live pictures right now from Pasco County near 5A High School. A student hit crossing the road. 10 News on the ground and ready with a live report. But first, wind and rain, a soggy Thursday throughout the Bay Area. This is video from Manatee County this afternoon as one of those strong storms moved through. And here's a look at the radar right now. You can see we are still dealing with wet weather in the Bay Area. Van Fleet will be here shortly. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Heather Van Est. And I'm Charles Belay. We begin with breaking news out of Pasco County, a student hit by a car in the area of Chicago Avenue and Chris Street. 10 News reporter Melanie Michael is live near 5A High School. She joins us now, Mel. Hey Charles, good evening to you. Of course, this is a very serious situation going on near 5A High School. A young woman, her name is Ocean Lee Mackenzie Marshall. She's 16 years old. She was hit by not one, but two cars coming home this afternoon from school. She lives in this area near the high school. Our 10 News cameras were rolling this afternoon near the scene. We want to show that to you right now. Again, uh, this happening around 2 o'clock this afternoon. A very fluid situation. The investigation is currently happening as we speak. This young woman is in serious condition, we're told, with injuries at Bayonet Point Medical Center. Now, here's what happened. She was trying to get across the road when she was hit by a car. Then after she was hit, she hit the ground and rolled underneath another car. All of this information coming into us from the Florida Highway Patrol, and it is indeed a very serious. Again, she's 16 years old in the hospital getting treatment right now at this hour, and people who saw it say it scared them to death. Um. I was watching TV and all of a sudden I heard a big loud thump noise and a screech mark uh, and what ended up happening was I walked outside my door and I saw this F-150 that's here on the corner here, um, a girl laying underneath it and it looked like her head was near the passenger tire. Look at you. Again, this young woman's name is Ocean Lee Mackenzie Marshall, 16 years old, a 5A high school student. Standing with me now, right now, live, is an exclusive interview with the Pasco superintendent, uh, Kurt Browning. Thank you so much for talking with us. This is very frightening for your students, for your parents, for your teachers who live in this area. Talk to us about it. Well, well it is. And uh, I was at another, uh, at a middle school this afternoon when I got the word that the accident occurred. And, and certainly it's, it's tragic, it's troubling. Uh, we'll have uh, crisis teams at 5A high school in the morning. Uh, to help faculty and uh, more, I think more importantly students uh, get through this. Uh, we've also done a connect ed call, a phone call to all the families tonight letting them know about the accident. So People here, if you don't mind me asking, people around here say that this is a, a, a dangerous era, quite frankly, that kids coming home have had problems. Parents are concerned about kids walking across the street. What can you tell us about that to maybe calm the parents' fears and the students for that matter? Well, well certainly what we do is we continually assess the, the, the safety uh, concerns around our schools and more importantly our schools. Uh, but as, but as I pointed out to you before we went on camera, I mean, where the accident occurred was off school property. Uh, and, you know, nothing prohibits uh, students from crossing the road wherever they want to or choose to cross the road. So we're going to look at this uh, and we'll work with uh, the, the officials to, to make sure that our students remain safe. Okay. All right. Thank Great. you so Thank much, you. Superintendent, for joining us. Uh, again, an exclusive interview right here on 10 News with the superintendent. They'll be looking at this issue further to see if there's anything more that can be done to keep these kids safe. But again, 16 year old uh, Ocean Lee McKenzie. Marshall at Bayonet Point Hospital in serious condition at this hour. We'll have more reports coming up tonight on 10 News at 6. But for now, I'm Melanie Michael live in Hudson 10 News. And breaking news right now out of Chicago, longtime film critic Roger Ebert has lost his battle with cancer. Ebert spent the past 45 years as the movie critic for the Chicago Sun-Times and also appeared for years on a show with fellow critic Gene Siskel. The Pulitzer Prize winner had announced on his blog that he was undergoing radiation treatment for cancer. He died today at the age of 70. 
And this is a 10 News weather alert. Another line of storms on the way. Now, this is a look at South Tampa this afternoon. Kind of gloomy most of the afternoon. This is video from the intersection of El Prado and Henderson. And now we'll take a live look at Gandhi Boulevard from our tower cam. We've seen watches and warnings throughout the day today, and it may not be done just yet. So let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Jim Van Fleet. Jim? That's what we've been putting out on all the social sites. Don't let your guard down just yet. Although we are getting a little bit of a break, it does not mean it's over. First and foremost, you will get that break for the next couple of hours, but rainfall amounts. It was all South Hillsborough County, Manatee County, portions of Hardy, Polk and Sarasota County picking up the most beneficial rain from all this, and we needed that over an inch of downtown Saint Pete, averaging about four tenths to six tenths from McDill Davis Islands around Hyde Park over to Treasure Island. But north of that, yeah, as we just saw anywhere from about a trace to a quarter of an inch. But again, we're not done just yet. Rainfall radar estimates south and east of Ruskin, Waimama and Sun City. They are impressive. Five inches of rain around I-75 just to the southeast of Ruskin. We had a viewer email too, and that does verify her rain gauge over four inches. Bradenton, Palmetto, the bullseye for you guys as well. Four to five inches of rain just from this one event. As we look down to Sarasota, three inches of rain in many places for you as well. Now, as we expand our view, it doesn't look that ominous, but what you don't see is what's threatening sunshine hitting the warm Gulf water. We will get an upper level piece of energy coming later tonight and through tomorrow morning. I'll take you through that step by step county by county and another round possible for you. And when it all clears for your weekend, Charles coming up, I've got the details. OK, Jim and stormy weather likely contributed to this scene. The driver of this beer truck lost control, hit a guardrail and then flipped over the highway into the Manatee River. We have a live crew down there this afternoon. We're going to bring you a live report at 530. And an Amber Alert update for you. Law enforcement is casting a wider net for two missing South Tampa children. We have new information tonight in the search for the two young boys at the center of what investigators say is a parental kidnapping. They could be just about anywhere by now, but investigators are getting a lot of tips. Ted News reporter Eric Glasser is covering Hillsborough County tonight. He's live at the sheriff's office. And Eric, I know yesterday we were really hoping to hear from the grandmother today, but but that didn't happen. Yeah, it didn't happen, Heather, and the reason is this. They say that the timing, in their opinion, just wasn't right. Remember, the grandmother was at the center of this kidnapping. She was the one who called 911. They were afraid that if she stepped in front of the microphone, yes, it might help the situation get the word out there. They were also afraid that she might say something that would spark some oversensitive reaction to it, and this is a time where they want cooler heads to prevail. They did, however, release that 911 tape of her calling up yesterday, and you can hear that sense of urgency in her voice. He tied me up. I was able to maneuver myself to appearances. An emotional call to 911. Patricia Hauser telling authorities her son-in-law, Joshua Haken, has just tied her up and kidnapped his two sons, four-year-old Chase and two-year-old Cole. He's not supposed to be near them. They've, he's been missing for nine months. Sources tell 10 News Haken was not armed at the time of the kidnapping. They're still searching for the 2006 Black Sierra pickup, license U95KT, and say it could be anywhere by now. As survival he and his wife Sharon could be at a remote campsite or perhaps heading toward sympathizers in California. We're working on getting uh, the information on the children on billboards across the southwest and southeast part of the country. Investigators releasing more details explained their concern for the boys. While not in immediate danger, sources described the Kakens as armed survivalists. Last June, heading to the west coast with the boys, they got in trouble in Slidell, Louisiana, and it was there their troubles started to snowball. Police Police in Louisiana say the Hakens attending an anti-government rally were later arrested for creating a disturbance at their hotel. In their room, they found drugs, weapons, and the two boys. The couple also alarmed authorities by telling them about completing their ultimate journey and taking a journey to Armageddon somewhere in California. The children were placed in temporary foster care, but it got even more serious when Joshua showed up at the foster home with a firearm demanding the return of his children. The boys were soon placed with their grandmother here in Tampa. Fast forward 10 months to Tuesday when officials in Louisiana stripped the couple of their parental rights, and the next day, the Hakens took the kids. They probably didn't agree with that decision, and uh, unfortunately, it might have been a misjudgment on their part, 
and what we're hoping right now that uh, we don't expect or anticipate them hurting the children. But it's that talk of a journey to Armageddon coupled with the drugs, Joshua's violent outburst in Louisiana, and now the kidnapping that has officials worried. Individual beliefs, that's fine. I mean, that's our constitutional right. You can believe in whatever you want to believe in. Uh, it's the manner in which the kids were taken is of concern to law enforcement and the reason we're taking the steps that we're taking. There have been plenty of tips filing in, I can tell you, from all over the country. Earlier today, what they thought might have been a pretty good lead somewhere in the Tennessee area turned out to be nothing. Again, police are asking you to be on lookout for that truck. If you see something, give them a call. Reporting live in Tampa, Eric Glasser, 10 News. Eric, thank you. 10 News team coverage continues now. Who is Joshua Haken and what led to this week's kidnapping? 10 News reporter Preston Rudy has been digging into Haken's past and joins us now live from outside the 35-year-old South Tampa home with some answers. Hey, Preston. Yeah, good afternoon, Charles. We know that Haken lived in the home that you see behind me, and we know that he loved guns. We know that he loved shooting guns. He loved the USF Bulls. And based on the comments that he posted online, he also loved his kids. And as Eric just explained, the custodial problems really began last summer in Louisiana when he was picked up for possession of marijuana on a cross country trip with his family on what he described as a journey to meet Armageddon. If you believe what Joshua Haken posted online, he thought every religion from Christianity to atheism was a plague. The father of two boys also thought he was the luckiest man alive. And he claimed his interest included sailing and shooting. That explains why he frequented a website for owners of Caltech semi-automatic pistols. He was also registered under the name Sailing Bull on the website Adam vs. the Man, a site for libertarian activist Adam Kokash. The mailbox outside Haken's modest 1,500 square foot South Tampa home also gives a big clue that Haken may have believed in conspiracy theories, like those espoused on the website Infowars.com which is run by radio host Alex Jones. We do know Haken's trouble with the law began last summer when police were called to a slide out Louisiana hotel for a disturbance involving Haken and his wife. At the hotel, Haken was found in possession of pot and other drug paraphernalia and talked about completing their ultimate journey. Shortly thereafter, his kids were placed in foster care and according to officials, Haken eventually showed up at the foster care facility waving a gun, but left when he couldn't get in. Then on Tuesday of this week, Haken's kids were turned over to the boy's grandparents. There was never any kind of thing that would suggest there would be some kind of problem. Neighbors describe Haken as someone who didn't really socialize with those living nearby. No, my husband found a dog one time and they took it in and that was about the only contact we ever had. But as someone who did spend time outside with his kids, and it's those two kids, two boys, that people are now worried about. You, know, you hope that they just kind of went somewhere and maybe the kids don't even have a clue what's going on. Now we also know that both Haken and his wife are engineers and we also know that Haken was a veteran of the U.S. Air Force. By the way, a warrant was also issued for Haken's arrest back in August when he failed to show up in court in Louisiana, stemming from those possession of marijuana charges. Reporting from South Tampa, I'm Preston Rudy, 10 News. Preston, thank you. And once again, take a look at the photos of Cole and Chase Haken. An Amber Alert was issued more than 24 hours ago for both of these boys. Investigators say people here in Florida, Louisiana, and Tennessee should be on the lookout for these little boys after they were taken from their grandparents in Tampa. Well, the big show is just getting started. Coming up, a woman thinks that these coats are screaming for help. Find out what she did coming up next. And the latest from Carnival's Triumph cruise ship still in trouble and a man is missing. And as we go to break, let's go to the big cameras, live pictures from St. Petersburg, live from I-275 and the Howard Franklin Bridge. Despite the rain, looks like traffic is moving and let's go to the big city, downtown Tampa. You're watching the big show, 10 News First at 5.